Let's just roll into this. John bleh, John Renwicky, there we go. Welcome yes. to the Running Effect Renwicky. Podcast. How are you doing this afternoon? Good, man. How are you? Too casual, too casual. We ran with each other yesterday. I know <laughs> you. We're having fun. And so uh, for the good people watching on YouTube or listening, wherever you are on your run or at home or doing chores, um, long story short, I found this list. 33 track and field quiz questions. If you're listening to this, it means it made the episode. If you're not, you won't know. You ready for this? We probably won't do all 33. Yeah, Let's this, just have fun. We'll see how many I get of these. <laughs> okay, first one. Going into a blind. So easy. Who holds the men's world record for the 100-meter sprint? Ooh, I think, I, I think that's Usain Bolt, yeah. That would be. That would be. One for one. Which country has the most Olympic gold medals in track and field? The United States. That is also correct. Uh, what's the woman's world record for the marathon? A, 215.25, B, 217.01, and C, 218.47. 15. That is correct. In which Olympic event would you find the, quote, Fosbury flop technique used? A, high jump, B, long jump, C, triple jump. High jump. <laughs> this is, this is, what is this wow. like, put out by? <laughs> uh, sportsfoundation.org. <laughs> yeah. Uh, number five, which track? I'm honestly surprised you got that. I would have. High jump? I, I would have guessed. The Fosbury. Well, I, one of my best friends in high school was, uh, he turned into a decathlete, Tim Duckworth, uh, indoor GB record holder for the okay. heptathlon. Um, Light work. So, yeah, I mean, I've, like, just been around it. Plus, my dad was, like, a high school coach, so, like, he would coach high jump a bit. And if I, like, if I was, like, can, of, you, heard of that? can you, like, visually show me the Fosbury flop? Would you know I mean, that's, how, that's what most people do. Like, that's what... Oh, really? That's the classic that's the, technique? on your back? Yeah, Have yeah. you ever seen those videos There's, like, of the three. people who jump, try to jump? <clears throat> like, on Instagram Reels, have you seen the kids who, like, will, the like... scissor? They're, like... Wait. Well, there's, like, three ways to high, high jump. High jump is the... Yeah. I'm looking high like jump. a fool right now. <laughs> With the bar, right? <laughs> and the, like, super comfy mat. Yeah. Yeah. Super comfy. Some people literally will try to, like, physically jump over it. Okay. Well, there's, like, you can do the high, the, the scissor kick, or there's the the western roll. Used to be super popular until, I think, Dick Fosbury came along and did the Fosbury flop. <laughs> this is a high jump podcast. I don't know why I know so much about that, but there's your fact about high jump. Love it. Okay, number five. Which track and, which track and field event is not a part of the te- decathlon? A, 110 hurdles. B, 800, C, 1500. 800. Wow. Well, I just told you my best friend did the decathlon. I would have guessed at 110 hurdles. Um, no, they definitely hurt. Number six, who is known as, quote, the world's fastest woman? A, Florence Griffith, Griffith Joyner. B, Allison Felix. C, Marita Coach. Joyner. That's correct. Wow. <laughs> Seven, in which country were the first modern Olympic Games held? A, Greece. B, France. C, Germany. Greece. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, he's on a roll. Okay, number eight. What? It, what we'll is just go the, till we get a, get one yeah, wrong. Yeah, sure, we have sure. To be done. What is the item thrown in the hammer throw event? A, a metal ball attached to a wire. B, a wooden stick with a weighted end. C, a rubber weight with a handle. The first one. Gosh dang it. <laughs> That's correct. Nine, which of these events is not a part of the heptathlon? A, 200. B, 400. C, 800. Uh, the second one. 400, that's correct. <laughs> we'll end here, we'll end here. Can you go 10 for 10? Um, who holds the men's world record for the triple jump? A, Jonathan Edwards, B, Christian Taylor, C, Kenny Harrison. First one. <laughs> 10 for 10. Hey, that's impressive. That was a guess between the last two. That that's I will impressive. Say. <laughs> that's impressive. Okay, uh, where, where do we want to go from there? You know a lot about high jump. If you weren't like a 15-5 mm. guy, like distance runner, what event? would you do event in track yeah Ooh. like if you applied the same amount most people of always ethic, ask like oh what sport would you do but not like if you applied event. the same amount of work ethic you do to to your distance running to a different event like which yeah. do you think you'd be best well at? i've always said like i feel like throwers and distance runners are very similar in that like and how we train in the sense of like us just like getting in like volume is similar to like just the amount in which they just are in the weight room lifting weights. Mm-hmm. Not to say that I think I would be a good thrower. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think like the field events are fun. Like watching like my friend who I've like already mentioned Tim like train for, like the pole vault and stuff. Like I'm mean, just over there like eating snacks. Like you look like you. Can he's be got a pole his skittles vault, ready to go out and pull. I feel like I'm too tall to pole vault. I don't know. I feel like they're kind of. Don't you want to be taller now? I don't know. Mondo's no. not that tall, is he? No, I don't think he's tall. But then but, like, I feel like our American, American pole vaulters are pretty tall. tall. Yeah. So maybe. Yeah, I don't know enough about this, that event to know like if height is, is an advantage or not, but yeah, I feel like pull vault would be fun. We're recording this, uh, what is the date, Wednesday? 
Tuesday. Wow. Yeah. Tuesday. It feels like it doesn't feel. Do you have your days <laughs> off too? Because I mean, of yeah. I, I just looked at my watch. That's what I knew. But yeah, first first off day between the sessions at the trials. So what was I even gonna ask there? Wow. Uh, Tuesday. Oh, I was gonna say this podcast will probably come out between the, the semi and the final of the 5K. You yep. ran the 15. Mm-hmm. What's the mindset going into this prelim? Yeah. Two days. Yeah, I mean, just try to get through to the final um, smoothly. You know, no no drama. Try to make it um, as uneventful as possible. Really, just um, yeah, move through. I think like not get too high emotionally. I like, kind of keep it the same as like energy you'd bring to a hard workout basically. I mean, I think we, that's something we preach in our group a lot. Like Corey certainly preaches is like, I mean, yeah, the emotional energy you're bringing to like hard workout days, like you can't turn into suddenly a different person on race day and, you know, you know, put the headphones on, start ignoring people, like, you know, try to be just so super serious. Um, so yeah, I think just, yeah, let it be what it's going to be. Don't make the, the moment too big. Obviously, it's a big moment, but try not to let it get the most of you in that sense and um, yeah, just move through. How are the legs feeling post-15? Honestly, good. I think, <clears throat> of course, like didn't advance to the final, unfortunately, in the 15, so I'm, I had four days in between the semifinal of the 1500 and the first round of the 5K, so it's about when I would have done probably a harder track session anyways leading up to the 5K, um, which was, I mean, of course factored into the decision to double and I mean if you make the final you make the final and you obviously put all your eggs in that basket for the 1500 but if if not like no harm no foul like we're ready to go and you know we've done all the work necessary leading into it where racing the 15 wasn't going to change too much of our preparation for the 5k build up. Talking about the prelim have heat sheets come out and if so or if not like what heat do you want to be in don't you always want to be in the second right because you can I, I mean, yeah, sure. The second would be nice just because there's four time qualifiers and it would be nice to know, you know, if, if it was slow in the first heat, what you'd need to be. With that said, I don't, yeah, we'll, we'll, it just depends, like, who's in the race. And, like, I, I certainly don't see myself necessarily. I mean, Corey could have different thoughts on it and you could see me doing something completely different on Thursday. <laughs> but I don't see myself being the one to be the rabbit for everybody. Um, I think just with my speed coming off of the 1500, I'm confident in my kick, um, but I mean, who knows? I, I mean, I, with the, the work we've done this season, like I'm, I'm comfortable if it goes fast, slow, like just excited to race and get through the round. If you had to guess, what is the slowest lap going to be in the prelim? <laughs> Without, I mean, <laughs> bl- blindly it. seeing it, like, I mean, you, if you told me there was a, I mean, 68 probably for sure. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a 70 in there. It just okay. like, like some of those that like that those first four laps like it could jog for a bit and then like s- someone will get anxious and take it off take off Drop like a 62 or yeah, something. yeah just like to string it out with you know there's not too many guys there by the last k obviously ncaa is a different level but mm-hmm. i was shocked at the championships they had like a 73 and then a 74 it's like in their 5k yeah yeah in the five well obviously they don't do prelims that'd be interesting <laughs> if the ncaa brought prelims, prelims. to the 5k yeah because the thing is, yeah. like, we, we saw this with the thing last night. It's like, you just never know what happens in championship races. Mm-hmm. And I wonder if you did that for enough years, if you'd see that the final. And you could probably speak to this, too. Like, the guys that are more strength-based, I feel like generally do better as rounds go on. Mm-hmm. Versus the guys that just have a kick a lot of times. Yeah. I don't know. What's your take on that? <laughs> I was a blind believer in that coming into the 1500, being like, oh, I'm going to be fine for the rounds. Um, like I have 5k strength um, but then again in the second round of the 1500 I didn't really feel any of that strength but um, yeah I think it just depends on the person and how you had to run the the first round of the 1500 I think I mean yeah the the first round of the 1500 this year like I think if you ask a lot of people like it probably ran more like a semifinal in those first rounds like there was I mean pretty much every he had to close in 151, 152, last 800. Um, I mean, some good runners didn't make even the semifinal. So, um, yeah, it's just it was tough. And I think, like, you see the, the veteran runners and the NCAA athletes who've had the experience going through those rounds. Like, those were kind of those who rose to the top for the final. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if it'd be necessarily attributed to, like, strength as much as just like experience moving through rounds and managing your emotions 
You told me yesterday that in the 1500 semifinal, I believe, you closed in 152. Or was that the first round? Um, first round. First, first round. round. Yeah, Close yeah. on 152. You said that was an 800 meter PR. <laughs> it would have been <laughs> before, that like? before this year. We've ran a couple 800s. Um, I mean, yeah, it's, it's just like what it takes, I guess, to do the 1500 at this level. I, I think for me, moving down into the 15 from like 5K, 10K in the previous years, it's certainly like, it's one of those things like I didn't really see myself having that kind of closing speed um but i mean yeah now i'm doing it so it's just kind of like oh wow that's fast like right um yeah it's just one of those things like even the way we train like even when we were doing our first 1500 of the year maybe in where would that have been like uh drake relays like closing i don't know we probably closed our last 800 there even like mid one fifth like 154 probably because we were like 55 and then quick lap before that and like in the training up to that, it's like it's really just strength work and lots of double threshold and hills. And so it's like sometimes you get into the races and like your strength really just carries you like a lot farther than you think it's going to. If since you know you haven't done all out eight hundreds in practice, obviously or anything right. like that. So it's just kind of yeah, fun little surprise. Yeah, like oh wow, that's pretty quick. <laughs> a lot of people talk about the physical preparation that goes in between rounds, but what's the mental preparation like? Resetting yourself. Yeah, that's that's tough and certainly something I'm, you know, always trying to get better at and, and still working on, um, right? Like you, you finish the the first round of the fifteen hundred and come back twenty four hours later, you've got to go again against you know the same guys but like more concentrated and it's tough, right? You have to calm down quickly, you know, all the logistics of obviously like nutrition and making sure you're getting to getting to sleep and um, like just relaxing as much as possible. I think it, for me, like the best thing I can do is almost just forget about like the race and forget about running and just detach from it. I don't know for like the day. Um, I feel like I'm, I've gotten better at, and I'm pretty good at just like, I used to get really nervous when I was younger. And I mean, even the first part of my professional career, but like, I feel like I almost like just put off my nerves until like race day, but you know, <laughs> you obviously like you, you get nervous and I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just, you have to manage, you know, the emotions as far as that goes but we always joke like on our team especially me and um i mean when i'm warming up with casey he gets an, e an ear of it or like adam and i are similar in that like we always just say how like oh like once you start your warm-up until like you're on the line basically like that just like 45 minutes hour whatever it is like it's just the worst feeling in the world like it's just your nerves are at all-time high like you just want to like get to the race and do it but you you've got to go through the warm-up routine and just be thinking about the race the entire time you're crossing paths with everybody that you're about to line up against and it's um yeah definitely can get can get you not so, to mention you've got all the coffee just <laughs> yeah heart rate's at like 200 beats a minute so we're talking here we're talking about the races that just happened the races that are about to happen at the u.s olympic trials like biggest stage in the u.s right mm -hmm. biggest race that happens every four years and I think a lot of people would think that, you know, as we're about to go back in time through your collegiate and high school career, you will have had like the most beautiful progression to get to where you're at today. Not to discredit these times and these places, because <clears throat> I never came anywhere close. But just going through some of these to give some context. What are you? What are you reading right now? <laughs> 2018. <laughs> what are you about to read off? 2018 outdoors. You took 21st in the 5,000, not at the NCAA championships, at the Pac-12 championships. And then 2018. Yeah, 2018. That's funny. You ran a personal best in the 5K at the Brian Clay Invitational, 1424. A high schooler <laughs> just ran one minute faster than that. Yeah. And then 2017 cross country, <laughs> you finished 120th, not at the NCAA championship meet, but at the West Regional, and you played 66 at the Pac-12 championships. Where'd you come from? How, how'd you how'd you do all yeah. this in the last six years? That is, that is the most polite roast I've ever received. Um, <laughs> I I mean but yeah. I can only do it because of where you're at today. Sure, like it's sure, so cool, right? Sure, right. I um I mean yeah, like my college career was not pretty. Um and yeah, <laughs> that's the best way to put it. It wasn't very pretty and I yeah, never made NCAAs. I was, you know, the first part of my collegiate career happy if I got included on the conference travel team to get my butt kicked at Pac-12s. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was tough, but I think it was you know, just for a lot of reasons. Like I just had a lot of growing up to do. Um, 
yeah, just had a lot of growing up to do, maturing, um, learning like what it took to be good at this level. Um, and I think it just it took me some time to get the consistency to put me into where I am today. I think I'm certainly like, yeah, just a late bloomer, I'd call it. <laughs> Is it crazy reflecting on your progress? Do you ever do that? Do you ever journal or just like on a run think about your progress in the sport? And if so, what are those feelings and emotions like? To be yeah. like, look down at your feet and be like, well, I'm yeah, like sponsored like, by Under Armour. For sure. Like, uh, there's not, like, not, like, many days go by where, like, I'm not extremely grateful for the position, like, I've been in. And, like, it's, I've been given a lot of opportunities. And I think I've, like, taken advantage of them when I've been given them. And um, I don't sit around often and, like, uh, pat myself on the back too much of, like, oh, man, I've, you know, I've made it. Like, right. I think if you told freshman in college, John, who was, like, a walk-on fifth best recruiting class of a group of freshmen, like just very mediocre runner, like, okay, like where I would be today, like, I'd be like, oh, that's pretty cool. But like, for some reason, I just always thought that I would get there. Like, I don't know why. It was just like, oh, like, I'm just going to keep doing this running thing. I'm like, I feel like I can be good at it. Um, yeah, so. How important well, do you think that inner belief is? And do you think if you didn't have it, you wouldn't be where you're at today? Yeah, oh, extremely important. Like, I think. I mean, if you don't believe in yourself, like, that's that's the most important thing, right? I mean, like, even, like, the my support system and, like, my coach, Corey, I think, like, he certainly, at certain points in my career, believed that I could do way more than I even thought was possible. Like, you know, he's speaking, you know, before I've made my first U.S. championship, or, I mean, I made the U.S. championships in the 10K my last year of college, but, like, after just that and like getting my butt kicked, he's like, oh yeah, like, you know, you can be someone who can make the final in the 1500 and like the 5k or the 10k, like you have that range and you can like do it all. And you have that, like that tool set before, like I even was like considering like doing the 1500 or thought that I had that kind of speed. Um, so yeah, I think it's, it's important to have the self-belief, but it's also important to have people around you who like get the most out of you and, and can see the best version of yourself as well. Yesterday at the track, warming up for your workout, we were talking about how your relationship with Corey goes back further than most people think it does, at least for me. Yeah. I didn't realize When it did you think it far. went back to just pro running? Yeah. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> when was the first time you got in a room with Corey and what yeah. were your first impressions of him? He, so my, I started at Arizona State with um, my first collegiate coach, Luke Quintana, and then he left for a different job and we had an assistant and then they were interviewing for like the new assistant position my fourth year of college and so like there was a couple coaches coming in on visits and we were doing some like time trial at, at tr the track and Corey was out there on his like coaching visit you know to see the school and interview basically um I surprisingly was injured so I wasn't participating in our time trial um I was you know just stopped by practice to say hey before going over to our alter g to get some running in and um I mean yeah just that was the first impression of him like oh he's you know, interviewing, I kind of knew of him, like, oh, he ran professionally for Nike and Steeplechase, Steeplechaser, um, but yeah, that was kind of initial first impressions, and then, um, yeah, he obviously, you know, fast forward, got the job, he was the assistant at first, so it wasn't, like, writing training or directly working with him, but um, my first, like, direct, like, coaching experience with him was um, Roy Griak, cross-country invite, uh, my fourth year, our assistant or our, our head cross country coach like got called away like family emergency, and so Corey was like the you know new assistant hire like running the team basically, and so just like pre race conversation with him like you know him giving me a game plan for the race was kind of like the first taste of like his competitiveness and just like I mean yeah like I, I'm just I wasn't like a great cross country runner at the time like my fourth year I was like I, maybe our top guy or like up there our top guys. Um, and him just like giving me the game plan or whatever and just I don't know I, from kind of that moment I was just like oh this guy like means business and he cares and I'm not sure why he's so invested but like he, he just like he gets it and um, fast forward that track that summer season um, he was that was like the first time he started like writing my training and um, up till that point I mean I really hadn't strung together a healthy more than like six months of training to be honest like in college maybe like eight months was like the most like consistent training I'd had in college and then um 
yeah, working with him, uh, just, you know, we made some significant changes to things. Um, but that was really like the summer leading into my fifth year through the end of my fifth year was like the first time I'd ever been healthy for a full, um, year. And I mean, I owe a lot of that to, to Corey and like his patience with me and, um, yeah, just willing to be, take things slow and develop me. So, yeah. Bring it full circle to today. What was the conversation like when you were going to go pro and join his group? Yeah. Well, so pro is, it was interesting because I, so I was with Under Armour individually already before we um, had our, or started our Mission Run Baltimore group. Um, I signed with Under Armour individually um, in 2021, like kind of as COVID was like, the initial like phase of COVID was kind of winding down. Um, and so I moved out to Boulder and in my mind, I was like, oh, I'm going to, you know, be based in Boulder for my pro running career. And like, this is kind of what it's going to look like. I was, Corey was coaching 10 minute elite at the time. I was kind of like, obviously wasn't with 10 minute elite, but training with some of those guys. Um, and then fast forward to like the, the Olympic trials in 2021 was when kind of like, you know, there started to be some talks of, Hey, like Under Armour wants to start this group in Baltimore and they want Corey to lead it up. Um, and so it was more of just a situation of, all right, when we move into Baltimore, yeah. like, <laughs> like it wasn't a, it's not like I was cons not ever considering going or not going. And, um, yeah, it was just, all right, <clears throat> sounds good. Like when are we going? Um, yeah. So you've been with Under Armour your entire professional running career. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. How cool is that? Oh yeah. Under Armour, like certainly, I mean, yeah, I, I, I think coming out of college, being an athlete who's, you know, never made NCAAs, um, didn't have any of the flashy times, any accolades <laughs> really like no, ac literally no accolades. Um, yeah. To have a coach that believed in me and to have, um, a brand that believed in me as well and to, to get to explore like my ceiling in this sport, like that, that's definitely something like more going back to what you were saying earlier. Like, you know, do I like look back and like where I am today? Like, Oh, I've, I've made it. Do you ever like think about that? Like, I don't think about that at all, to be honest, but I think about every day, like just how lucky I am and, um, and understanding I am that not many people in my situations, it's, yeah, really not anybody in my situation has been given the opportunity to pursue running in, in the way that I have. And so I'm, I'm just very grateful and thankful for that um, to Corey, to Under Armour, um, to, to be able to, to get to where I am today because they've given me the, you know, the runway in order to do that. To like a high schooler or an NCAA athlete listening who one day wants to make it where you are, wants to line up at like U.S. <laughs> Olympic trials 2028, maybe compete against you. Yeah. What would be some pieces of advice for like someone who's not like quite there, yeah. but they have that inner belief that you had, but the yeah. results aren't showing it? Yeah, you just like, you have to love what you do, first of all. I mean, like you're training way more than you're racing. I mean, of course you have to love racing and love competing. Like that's at the end of the day, the most important thing. But like you've got to love the work and you have to be okay putting in the work for a long period of time without seeing um the results like i mean there's always going to be those just raw talented guys like that are just going to line up and crush you but like i think the the longer you st stay with it and give yourself time to develop and be patient with yourself um yeah like you, you you can get where you want to go I, like my little brother he's not a runner but he's um a pretty competitive swimmer um and like it's kind of similar things that like conversations I have with him all the time he's a junior in high school and he's like looking at colleges right now actually and um it's like you can you can have everything you want like in athletics I mean in life really it can make it even more broad about life like but you, like you have to know what that is um and you have to be willing to to work at it <laughs> like um it's simple like just n know what you're aiming at and and chase it Talking a little bit about training, because we talked about it yesterday, I'm curious. You've mentioned double threshold sessions, track <laughs> workouts. How hard do you train? What does training look like for you? We train hard. Yeah, I mean, our, we have, we've got a great group of guys that, that makes the hard training feel not hard. It makes it fun, to be honest. I mean, we're, we, you know, giving each other hard times, you know, just really in, enjoyable. I think, like, the fall is probably, like, 
I don't know, the, the work that I enjoy the most, just when they like, you kind of get to disappear and drain type uh, energy and you know, go to Flagstaff camp or we're at Baltimore just kind of tucked away um, doing the high, high volume, double threshold, the unglamorous hill sessions uh, in Baltimore, like just down in the, in the trenches together. And um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're training really hard and we've got some really talented guys that you, know, you show up any given day, someone's going to be feeling good and, you know, they're going to be carrying you or, you know, or if it's a double threshold day and, you know, not really getting after it in the sense of you're just locking into a rhythm, it's, you've got a, a line of six, seven guys that are just going to help pull, pull, pull you along. Take me through a workout leading into U.S. Champs that gave you some confidence. Was there a workout where you, like, stepped off the chat and like, <laughs> man, that was a good one? Um, we did, like, our, our last, uh, like, We'll time it so it's like 10 days out usually, maybe 10 to 8 days out before a race would be like our last like key session. Um, we did, I'm giving away trade secrets, Corey might get mad at me. We, we did like a couple hard 800s and some interval work, like 800s booking and some um, book ending, some interval work basically. And I think just the, the paces we were hitting for some of the 800s was like with the effort, like that I was putting into them, like was like, oh, like, we're pretty fit we're right fit. now. Yeah, yeah, like it just f felt good. And I think just like visualizing like, okay, like I'm ending this rep and like telling myself, okay, if like if I needed to, I could run another 300, 400 meters, like closing in a 1500. Like, I mean, just things like that and workouts, like are what give me confidence. What would you have to do? Uh, I don't want to say on Thursday because I have confidence you're going to make the final. What would you have <laughs> to do in Eugene to, to walk away feeling like this week was a successful event? Yeah. That's, that's a good question, um, right? I mean, I think everybody obviously comes to the trials and, you know, when, when there are three, three of the top spots that get to go to the Olympic Games and you can't tell me there's a single person here at the Olympic trials who's like, that's not their goal in some shape or form. It's like make it to the Olympics someday. Like, obviously, a lot of people are walking away not having attained that goal. And so, like, you have to, you have to be okay having, like, success in other ways and that not being the end all be all um so yeah that, that's a tough question i think for me it comes down to more of just like like it's simple and it's cliche but like just giving my best effort like if as long as like i'm giving my best effort and i know that like hey like i'm competing in the race with like everything i have in me and 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 being towards the top and being competitive like i'm gonna walk away and i'm gonna be happy every single time um yeah, I think like any any race where I'm just focused on comp like just the pure competition of it, and, and that's it. Like I've walked away happy. So, final serious question for you: for those that have listened to our conversation today, what would be the final takeaway message you want to leave with them? <laughs> <It's> so broad. <laughs> Whatever, whatever's on your heart. What do you want to say to the people? Uh, I mean, I don't know. What's something you <laughs> wish you knew 15 years ago? Something I wish I knew 15 years ago. Um, like 10 years ago. Oh, 15 years ago, I'd just start double threshold much <laughs> sooner. <laughs> yeah, Maybe triple time. threshold. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, like, genuinely, like, that probably would have been pretty pretty nice. Yeah, okay. I think, like, I think, too, like, that's something, that, like, I love about our group and, and Corey specifically is, like, our willingness as, like, a group of athletes and, like, our, I mean, from our strength coach, Carrie Lane, to Corey, like, to not be, like, oh, this is, this is what I've done, this is what works, this is what we have to do. Like, at the end of every season, even indoors to outdoors, like, coaches with athletes, coaches with one another, like, people are sitting down and they're, like, thinking about, like, hey, what did we not do, like, a performance review almost. Like, you do that in business all the time. Like, I think more people should do that in athletics of, like, what did we do wrong and how can we improve on that to make it better? And so sometimes it's big things, sometimes it's little things, but we're always changing what we do. It's never like no two years have been the same training ever for what we've been doing up to this point. And so like, I, I don't expect, you know, coming off this season, building up for next fall to be any different. I'm sure we'll be doing things different um, from how many days are in our cycle to how frequently we work out to what those workouts are to, what we're doing in the gym like it's always changing and it's um it's always getting better so i think just maybe having that mindset sooner of like there's no right or wrong answers it's just 
how can you continue to improve and tweak things, like, it would probably be better for it. Corey was here, like, two hours ago before my podcast with Vince. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I said, what, what things should I poke John with or what questions should I ask him? <laughs> I'll ask one of those. I won't ask the other one. I'll tell you it off air. No, uh, you can ask them both, and okay. then you can not put it in if I say don't put it in. Okay, first one was he said, ask me about his love life. <laughs> he would say that. That's the thing about Corey is he's... Hey, maybe your future wife watching. Yeah, he's... he's um, we always joke about this with one of my friends. Like, he pretends to not, like... Like, if we're, like, joking about, like, drama like that around him, he'll be like, I don't want to hear that. Like, because I feel like I... I've had a very, uh, like, I, I bring a lot of drama around. Um, that's not a right way to put that. But, like, we're joking about that kind of stuff right, every right, now right, and then. Right. And, like, Corey's like, I don't need to hear this. But, like, we know he loves the drama. Like, he's all about it. Because then, like, we'll walk out and, like, you know, the next thing he's, like, asking, like, Jan, our um, social media coordinator, like, all right, what, what's, what's going on? What's the tea? Um, <laughs> so, yeah, he, he would ask that because he loves the drama. Um, yeah, that's all. That. That's okay. all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> okay, and then but. the second one was so much lighter. He said, uh, ask him, what was it? It was, um, like, who's your favorite godson? Something to uh, that extent. And yes, I, I, I am all. very lucky that uh, Corey's son, Colt, uh, Corey at and, uh, Altitude Camp this year, because he, he was in Baltimore for a bit, like family stuff, of course. He's got a son now. Um, he was coming out and um, for, like, the end of our – this was the end of our winter camp, and um, his son Colt's baptism was going to be, like, at the end of camp before we did, like, a cross-country race maybe. This was, like, in November. Um, like, we were just, like, getting dinner one night, just him and I, like, grabbing food to go or something. And, like, he was, like, FaceTiming Jordan, his wife, who um, actually, like, yeah, Jordan's so great. Like, he met Jordan at Arizona State, and so, like, a lot of, like, once I graduated, I was coaching with Corey for a year before we moved to Boulder, and, like, just got to be around like them like all the time and like as they were kind of like you know in the early stages of the relationship it was just kind of like the three of us just you know going out having fun messing around um it's just like really fun like they, they are all are very much like second set of parents to me in a lot of ways obviously much younger to me in age but like almost like older siblings and like kind of parental figures as well so like just so lucky to have both of them in my life but um like on the FaceTime call like they were like, oh, like, do you want to ask him? And so, like, Corey, they asked me to be um, Colt's godfather or co-godfather, -go what Corey's um, cousin, and I share the responsibilities. Um, and so that was just, yeah, super, like, important to me and definitely, um, yeah, just, like, really fun, happy surprise. And um, so we got to celebrate his baptism at the end of our altitude camp. All the guys came down to Scottsdale. We did it at uh, my, my uh, like, Parish's priest actually like did the service and so it was like you know family priest and like I, who I knew growing up so it was just like a super fun um, experience for me and um, and funny enough I was having my family has like a pendant that we all like if you're like I think like grandma started it like I don't know 50 years ago like if you marry into the family or you get like um, like you know your godson or goddaughter or whatever um, and all the kids like my cousins have it like this pendant. So I was getting one made um, in Tucson with my uncle and like on the back of it, I was putting like his baptism date and I was like looking at mine just to like, you know, make sure, okay, the initials, whatever just was on it. We had the same baptism wow. date that I didn't realize. Uh, wow, that's just sick. so random. I mean, yeah. obviously the year is different, but like, a, yeah, November 26th so was just like, just really random. That's super and, cool. Yeah, so I was able to give him that before uh, his birthday, like, yeah, his first birthday this past year. So, heck yeah. Super special. So, Last question for you. The question I ask every guest on every single episode, if you had Gordon Ramsay coming over to your house for dinner, what would you choose to make for him? <laughs> what would I make for him? What you would make for him? Oh, gosh. Uh, I feel like, well, of course I've seen, like, the Gordon Ramsay, like, how to make the best scrambled eggs video. So sure. I feel like I've got those done. I'm not going to make him scrambled eggs for dinner. But, like, I feel like if I needed to, like, if I needed to nail something simple in order to, like, get, um, top marks, as they call it in the culinary industry. Shout out uh, Izzy Kinsley. Um, I would do scrambled eggs because I feel like I, I got it nailed, like, you know, hot, cold, whatever. But dinner, mm, I don't know. That's a tough one. Yeah. What are you best at these days? I mean... If your parents came over for dinner, what would you make them? I mean, I, I make a good Sunday sauce. Okay. 
Yeah. What is that? Like just like like good proper like like pasta. Like, oh, okay. Like a meat sauce with you know all the the fixings. All the fixings. And, yeah. I love it. I love it. I can we'll, do that pretty well. We'll go crush it Thursday. Uh, question for you, I guess. This is kind of irrelevant for the pod, but yeah. we're not really podcasting. We're just chatting. Yeah. Pre meet tomorrow. What you doing? Ooh, pre meet. Yeah, probably like. 10 by K threshold in the morning. Okay. And then we come back and run it back in the evening. Oh, okay. Not like fours <laughs> all out at 400 pace? Or... No, that was today. Oh, that's today. Okay. Yeah. Well, John, appreciate the combo. <laughs> Crush on Thursday. Thank you.